Hey guys and welcome to the video. So 2022 is coming and everyone is ready to jump on the diet bandwagon again after 2021. And so in this video, I'd like to give you five tips for losing weight in 2022 and keeping the weight off rather than it being something you start again in 2023, like so many people will do. And before I start, I have something for you. I have a webinar which I go over the three steps for solving emotional eating. So emotional eating is something people struggle with a lot and it stops people moving forward with their weight loss. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, I have put a link down in the description below. But for now, let's get into the video. Right, so tip number one is don't try the same thing again. So a lot of people tell me, oh, I did Slimming World before and it worked the first time, so I'm going to do it again. So if it worked the first time, why are you doing it again? Oh, because I did this or that, that or the other and um, I put the weight back on. So did it work the first time? Yeah, it did, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I just went off the diet. So wait a sec, did it work? Why did you go off the diet? Oh, I couldn't stick to it. So maybe the diet didn't work for you. It might have just been a short-term solution. And so this is a, a really important thing to understand. Not blaming yourself for failing on the diet. Maybe it was the diet that wasn't good enough for you. Maybe it didn't fit to you. Maybe it didn't give you what you needed to lose weight in the short term. Maybe it gave you some evidence that it did work because you lost some weight, but that gave you that false thinking of when you did fail on it, it was your fault. But don't blame it on yourself. Think about what the diet didn't have and what it didn't provide you and what it didn't teach you to keep the weight off long term. So what most people don't realize that is that a diet is not really a food problem. Yes, food comes into it as an important part, but a diet is usually a thinking and decision-making problem. So not knowing how to make decisions around food, not knowing how to think around food and make the best decisions. And when you make a decision that doesn't help you towards your goal, you end up going off the diet. And this is what makes you fail. And so also, most of the problem is that you don't have the required emotional fitness. So what is emotional fitness? Emotional fitness is being able to manage your emotions. Do you currently manage your emotions with food? And if you do, then you're gonna be constantly pulled back in the opposite direction. And I mentioned about my webinar. My webinar goes over the three steps to solving emotional eating, if you're interested in that. Again, the link is down there in the description. But this is so, so important. Not blaming it on yourself and not just trying the same diet over and over again. So in 2020, 2021, 2022, because you end up doing that for the rest of your life. And this has been proven, they've done surveys on people of how many diets they do. And a lot of people just end up dieting for the rest of their life and live in misery because they're losing a bit of weight, gaining it, losing a bit of weight and gaining it. And this is not a way to live, right? So tip number two is not having a clear goal. So most people know what they, they don't want. So they know why they're doing it. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be overweight anymore. I don't want to have low confidence. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to have low energy. I don't want to have all these health risks. They know why they're doing it, but they don't know what they want. And this gives you the push. It gives you some motivation to get started. But as soon as you feel better about yourself, then that motivation goes away. And so the diet you're doing, you attach more pain to that than your current situation. So it's like, I don't want to do this diet anymore and I feel better about myself, so I don't need to. And so not knowing what you actually want, not knowing how your life will be and yeah, what you're going to achieve in great vivid detail, which will give you the excitement and the motivation to wake up every day to work towards your goal. But like I said, most people are driven by desperation. They know exactly why they don't want to be in the situation anymore. They're pushed, they're driven by their emotional pain to do something about it, but they have no clear direction and they don't know what they want. They just want to get away from their current situation, which is fine for short-term weight loss, but it doesn't give you long-term results. So this is so, so important. Sitting down and creating a, a vision for your future, vivid detail, make it emotional. 
what you actually want, all those things, how your life will be in every way. Because this is what gives you that motivation and makes it exciting enough to put in the effort to make changes in your life. So tip number three is not cutting everything out after Christmas. So often people overindulge and feel like they have eaten too much over Christmas. So the opposite reaction to that is, or the common reaction to that is to swing completely the other way and think, oh, I've eaten too much, so I'm gonna cut everything out and go on a detox, I'm gonna cut out sugar, I'm gonna cut out chocolate, I'm gonna be perfect. And this makes you feel deprived. And this is not the way to do it. You often feel hungrier, your body has more stress because you are not eating enough, you're probably doing too much exercise. So it comes back to what I talk about a lot, the all or nothing mindset. You're either doing it like perfectly, totally on it, on it, on it, on it, on it, and pushing yourself to the max, or not doing anything at all. And this just doesn't work. You need to have something in between where everything is kind of balanced, and you're doing enough, you're not overstressing yourself, you're eating enough. And this is what gets you long-term results rather than cutting everything out for a short amount of time and then your willpower lapsing and then having a binge, which is what so commonly happens. So you need to have what I call the gray mindset. So not being perfect and not doing nothing, but something in between, something you can sustain, something that gets you results consistently, but is not totally like on it and causing so much stress that you need to have some time off the diet and then do nothing. So it's so, 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 so important. So tip number four is that a lot of people wait until after Christmas to start their diet because they feel like they need a clear road. They want a clear road with no obstacles. So yeah, I can be perfect, nothing's gonna stop me losing this weight. And this actually has the opposite effect. So if you're waiting till after Christmas, it means you can't deal with that situation. And so if you are waiting for this clear road, you don't learn to deal with obstacles. And what most people don't think about is there are gonna be obstacles. So there's the big obstacles like everything that happens in the year, similar to Christmas, like parties, weddings, going out, everything, Easter, things like that, birthdays, things that are obstacles to your diet, which you don't know how to navigate. If you wait until after them, well, there's always going to be another one to start with, but you don't learn anything. You don't learn how to deal with them. You don't learn how to eat in those situations. And then also the smaller obstacles of how often does your day actually go to routine? How often do unpredictable things happen that throw you off? And then this all or nothing mindset comes in of, oh, I haven't been perfect today. And so um, I'll start again tomorrow because then I can be perfect again because I can only get results when I'm perfect. And it's this mindset that stops you getting results because how often are you off the diet? And that is very, very low consistency. And you end up not getting results because of that. So it's very important to think about learning how to think and make decisions around food and actually wanting to find obstacles because it's these obstacles that you need to learn how to solve to have long-term diet success. And tip number five is not attaching your motivation to continual progress. So a lot of people attach their motivation to constantly seeing results. And this comes from low self-worth. So it comes from the idea that I'm not enough and I need to prove to myself that I can do this and I, can, I need to prove to myself that I'm gonna constantly see results, otherwise I'm not enough. And your brain is on constant alert because it's affecting your self-worth, which is a threat to the body, a threat to the mind of, again, I'm not enough. What is wrong with me? So you look out for meaning, you attach meaning to things that support that idea or the opposite, actually. So am I enough? Am I enough? Am I constantly getting results? Am I constantly seeing the number on the scale don't go down? Is it constantly going the way I want it to go? And when you don't see it going the way you want it to go, your motivation is affected then. And how often does it happen? Let me know in the comments. Do you not see the number on the scale that you want to see? And then it affects your whole day. You feel down, you feel different, and it affects your motivation, your behaviors are different, and you don't carry out the behaviors that you need to to actually get your results. So it's the subsequent emotional change 
that makes you or throws you off your diet progress. And so your motivation needs to be attached to your goal, what you want, how you want your life to be rather than constant progress because you're never going to see constant progress. Nothing is a straight line. Any success has ups and downs. And like I said, if the motivation is attached to the ups and downs, then you're going to feel highs and lows and those lows are going to be what throw you off. So the motivation needs to be attached to your end goal. What do you want? How you want your life to be? The exciting reason that's always there. That reason will not go away as long as you make it vivid and strong enough. And so the expectation, yes, the progress will go up and down, but I will do what it takes to get to my goal. And having this is so powerful and stops you going off track. So these are the five reasons, very simple, but things that people don't consider and don't know. So again, like I mentioned before, if you really like some help with emotional eating, I have a webinar, three steps to solving emotional eating. The link is down there in the description. I'd like to see you there if you do struggle with emotional eating, because I think this is very powerful for a lot of people and it will help them so, so much. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a like and comment down below. What have you found most helpful? Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and I'll see you in the next one.